go there, okay, so that's going to be good. Right after service here, there'll be coffee and punch and donuts. So if you want some, you can have some coffee, donuts, and punch, all right? So let's give Patrick a hand. All right, praise the Lord, all right. All right. I know Patrick before he got married, all right? But praise God, now he's married, and he has, you have three girls? Two girls and a boy. And a boy, all right. So good, good to have you here, Patrick, okay? Amen. Let it go, okay? It's gorgeous. <laughs> He called me chaplain. I said, you can call me whatever you want. It's cool. Help me pray tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we just thank you for this wonderful evening. Thank you, God, that we could gather together in your name. Thank you, God, for your mercy, your grace. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you for never letting us go. Thank you for never giving up on us. Thank you, God, for everyone in this building. Thank you for our brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank you that we don't have to go through life alone. Thank you, God, for the body of Christ. Thank you that we can be called sons and daughters of God. Oh, we thank you, God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. And we got to learn to be thankful. There's a song we sing in Madeira called Gratitude, and I'm like, man, I like that song. Because it's talking about, I got just one move. You know, it's like, you got a line inside of your love. I was like, man, that's me. I only got one chord. I'm like the worship leader, right? But I only got one chord right here. <laughs> they got, they hit all the octaves and all this. I was like, man, I got like one key, half a key, I guess I see it. But that's all right. But I'm going to give God whatever I got. And that's the thing. If that's all I got, then I'm going to give it all, you know? You know, so I'm going to be faithful with that little talent God's given me. And whatever God has given you, be faithful with that. And um, so tonight uh, I want to look at the life of Moses pretty much because, uh, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, men of God and women of God, sometimes we don't respond the way that God wants us to respond. Situations happen, and sometimes we don't respond to those situations correctly. Or we can respond better. Or maybe we don't res respond to certain people the way that, that glorifies God. Maybe we're not, we don't respond to certain people. We respond to these people really good, but because of these people, we're kind of short fused with them. We could be really short, so God cares about how we respond. And sometimes the way that we were grown up, you know, we could use that as an excuse. But sometimes, you know, the, the way that we've grown up, the environment that we were raised in, that begins to form our character. It begins to, sometimes we have defects of character. Things happen to us. There's damage done to us. And sometimes and we got to learn how to behave like Christians. We got to learn to behave like Jesus. We got to learn how to model Jesus Christ. And it's a process. It's a process. And uh, so you got to understand, life is a process. It's a lifelong process. I remember talking to this guy. He was coming to recovery. This guy was drinking all the time. Then he, then he started drinking just like once a week, and he was doing better. He's coming to recovery. And he was sober for a few months. And you know what? And he's like, man, Pat, I don't understand. I messed up. I drank. I go, what do you mean? He goes, I don't understand. You, you know, I come to recovery. And I was like, you know, he was, the, you know, and, and, I be, and, and he's like, man, I, I made, he goes, man, I drank it. They go, well, how long has it been? He goes, about, I think it was about like six months. It was a good amount of time. I said, and, and he only just, he just messed up one time. I said, you know what, though? You're not looking at the progress. You used to drink every day. And I'm not saying that what, it was okay for him to drink. But he used to drink every day. Then he was just drinking on the weekends. Then he was just, you know, he, there's progress. And sometimes you just see the failure, but you don't see the progress. You see that we, we look at people and we see their failures, but we don't see the progress. We get mad when they fail, but we didn't praise them for all the time they didn't fail. You know, we could shame them because they got knocked down one time. But what about all the times they took the hit, they took a lick and they kept on ticking? What about those times? Did we praise them when they came to church? Did we praise them to say, hey, man, it's good to see you today. Good to see you today. I remember coming to the house of the Lord. I'm like, man, people are like, hey, what's going on? Is it okay? I was like, man, I felt like, man, get off me, man. Really? I was like, man, I don't want pity. But when, you know what felt good for me? So I learned. I said, I don't want people to feel like that. Oh, man, are you okay? We're glad you're I feel sorry for me. No. But well, I like when people say, hey, what's up? Hey, Pat, what's going on? Hey, how you doing? It's good to see you today. You know what I mean? Because, man, people are battling. People want to be, people want to be where they're appreciated. People want to be where they're, where they're welcomed. 
Jesus went where he was welcomed. Uh, you ever go to someone's house? That's not even there. That's not even what we're talking about. You ever go to someone's house and, and or someone invites you to somebody else's house? Man, that's weird. Uh, that's weird. Hey, let's go. We're going to go to this house. Well, I don't really know. Oh, come on. They're cool. They, you know, could you go with me? You know, it's, it's awkward. But when people, when you go there and they, they make you feel welcome, it's like, man, you know, it feels good. You're like, man, I'm glad I came. And that's how we want to create that atmosphere here in the house of God. Man, I'm glad you came today. It's good to see you today. Amen. So we're, at the life, we're going to look at the life of Moses. In the book of Hebrews, I'm going to read a little bit about him. A little, it gives a little quick backstory. It says, by faith, in Hebrews 11:23, by faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. By faith, when he has come to years, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the approach, the reproach of Christ. Greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he was looking to the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. He endured as seeing him who was invisible. Through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest they be, he be destroyed the first, uh, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as by, as by dry land, which the Egyptians, uh, assaying to do, were, were drowned. So Moses did a lot of good works, but he, didn't, he had a rough start. Man, he, he had a rough start, man. They wanted to abort that boy. You know, not just that, but his parents had to get rid of him, and they didn't want to get rid of him, but they came to the point where they had him, so he wasn't just a, he didn't just grow up. Man, he grew up adopted. Think about it, man. He was adopted. Man, he wanted to be with his people. You know, he knew his people. He seen his people getting mistreated. He knew where he came from. But, man, you know, he could have had all the reasons. All the reasons why. Well, how come they don't like us? How come I can't be with my family? How come I can't spend time with my, you know, he had to be a part of Pharaoh's family. But there was things in his life. Amen. So maybe our upbringing, amen, maybe we got a little bitterness in there, man. Maybe, you know, maybe we were abandoned by parents. Maybe we were abandoned by, uh, you know, but maybe they didn't have a choice. But, you know, for whatever reason, you know, I'm sure it affected his life. So Moses did many great works, but, you know, if we look at his life, he let his emotions get the best of him sometimes. And sometimes we can, even as Christians, man, we can do a lot of powerful things for God. And next thing you know, something happens and we get all bent out of shape. Something happens and we have a cow. Is that, did they still say that? Don't have a cow? We have a cow. Something happens and, you know, someone triggers, uh, hit, hits a certain button in your life and your emotions spring up. And when your emotions spring up, you can't think. They could be anger, emotions. So it's hard. We need to learn to overcome our emotions. We can't respond to our emotions. I was talking to another counselor at work, and we were talking about it. And he goes, man, the spirit leads. But, the, but the, he goes, we either led by the, led by the spirit or, or driven by the flesh. And I go, man, sometimes it feels like that flesh wants to drive you. But the spirit, man, God's a gentleman. God wants to lead us, but that spirit wants to drive you. And I was like, man, and I, was, and I think I heard that on the radio too, and I was like, man, that's so true because sometimes something's trying to drive me in a different direction, but I said, no, I'm not responding to that. I need to be led by God. Sometimes people are provoking me, provoking my feelings. My emotions are being provoked or afflicted inside, and it's like it wants to drive me in another direction, but I said, no, I need to be led by God. And it's hard when your emotions are, are topped up, whether it's anger, whatever it is. I remember emotions, uh, you know, a lot of people get caught up in emotions just like, I don't know what that song was, Lost in Emotion. You guys know that song, right? I'm not going to sing it because my voice is dry. <laughs> but we do. I remember, you know, even, even when I, before I got married, I, I, when, I, when I met my wife at church, but I couldn't talk because I was lost in emotion. The pastor would tell me to say hi, and I'd be like, I would freeze up all the time. But you know what? I wasn't responding. I had to learn to overcome those and learn to be a gentleman and learn at least to say hi. You know, they would tell me, say hi to her, and I would freeze up. So our emotions are a powerful thing. Whether it's anger, you know, sometimes we want to respond. And sometimes if you're going to respond wrong, it's better not to respond at all, right? And sometimes we want to respond the wrong way. And Moses had a problem. Sometimes he would, uh, and he was a man like you and I. But he had to learn. We have to learn because you know what? It'll cost you. How we respond to cost. I mean, God loves us. God never stopped working with Moses. God never left Moses. But you know what it cost him? It cost him the promised land. 
It cost him the promised land. God never left Moses. God worked with Moses to the very last day. But when it came down to it, because the way he responded to situations, the way he responded to people, the, 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 the way that he treated God's people, God says, you know what? You're not going to go to the promised land. Somebody else is going to take them there. And it could cost us that God has a destiny for all of us. God has a destination for all of us. Uh, but if the, if we if whether we reach that destination, it's up to you and I. It's not going to happen on its own. There's a lot of people teaching doctors about, like, predestination. Well, if God wants it, you'll get there. If, God, if that's where God wants you to be, you'll be there. No, God gives us a road map. God gave us a road map. God put a calling on your life. Whether you reach that destination, it's up to you. If I wanted to come to Fresno tonight, I had an invitation like, man, God, call me to be here. It's up to me to make sure I follow the right roads to get here. It's up to me to make sure I obey the laws so I can get here on time so I don't get pulled over with a ticket. That's why I only go 78. In the but it's up to me whether I'm going to make that destination. Well, maybe the Lord didn't want me to be here. I got pulled over flat, whatever. No, man, maybe I was driving too fast. Maybe I didn't check the air in my tire. Whatever it is. But the same thing in our life, man, God has the destination. Whether we reach it, it's up to us. And it cost Moses. Why? Because of the way he responded. And, man, he wanted to go. God, God chose him. He wanted to go, but the way he responded to certain situations, God said, man, you're not going to lead the people. Same thing happened to David. He let his emotions get in the way. Right? When he saw that woman, he's like, man, his emotions were, woo. And then he, when he killed, then he got angry. He tried to hide it. He had to kill him. His emotions got the best of him. And God says, man, you're not going to, you got too much blood on your hands. Your son's going to build my house. And it cost him. He's still known as a man of God, but he didn't get to reach the destiny that God called him because of the way he responded to the situation, the way he handled certain situations in his life. And we can learn from that. We can learn from that. So in 1 Timothy 4, 7, it says, But refuse profane old wise fables and exercise thyself unto godliness. For bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having the promise of life that now is and, which, and, and that which is to come. So we got to maintain our spiritual fitness. You know why? Because you don't, you know why? Because you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what someone's going to pull out and wreck your car. You don't know where you're going to check your account. It's going to be down. Man, I went through some things last year, man. I was just like, I thought I was doing good on some investments. Next thing you know, uh, man, my investments are down. I got, you know, in the thousands. I'm like, man, that's God. it hurt me. And then I go, try to do a little more, and it hurt me some more. I kept hurting me. And you know what? I just got, you know, well, it is what it is. At first, I was all sad. I was first like, man, it was affecting me. But now I got used to losing money. It's not that bad. <laughs> hey, but if, you know, if I praise God when I get money, why not praise God when I ain't got no money? It's the same thing. Whether I win or lose, I'm praising Jesus. That's what it taught me to do. And you know what? It taught my daughter stuff. She goes, you know what? You, you know what I'm going to do, Dad? I'm going to do the opposite of what you do. That's what she told me. I said, so I did this move, and look what it comes. She goes, I'm going to do the opposite. That's what she was telling me. So praise the Lord. So, you know, we're going to learn something out of this. But the same thing, we can learn from Moses' mistakes, from Moses' response, you know, from others, you know, the way others, you know, Probably treated us even. Just because, we, you, know, you know, we're here. I mean, we all have flaws. We're all working. We always want to be a better us. I always want to be a better me. I always want to be a better husband. I always want to be a better worship leader. And there's been times my wife says, man, you can't be mean to this drummer. And we had different drummers throughout the years. But sometimes I would be like, no, it's not like that. Come here. What are you doing? You know what I mean? And I'll, and I'll be, be like that, you know. But then sometimes they ask me to play the drums on, and like panic, I'm like panicking on there. But I didn't look at my own self when I was on there. And I'd be panicking on there. I'll panic. I'll be like, man, I can't wait till this song finishes. Like, oh, man, the song finished. And then when you guys would come over, like sometimes I'd be on the drums and Fresno would come over. Like, oh, man, Fresno's here. And I'll really be panicking. But we got to maintain our spiritual fitness. How? By praying, reading his word, and behaving like Christ. Continue to be Christ-like. Continue to keep uh, in the things of God, even when it's easy. Because we know when, it's, when, when things are going well, it's easy to lay back. It's easy to say, you know what? I'm just going to listen to some worship music. I'm not really going to pray in the spirit, but you don't know what's going to happen. Man, there's times I felt like, man, I'm going to take it easy. And next thing you know, everything is great. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for this day. You know what? 
maybe I'll read the I'll read the scripture later and I go on my day and then all of a sudden somebody does one thing and the trigger goes off and bam at work. I'm like, I said, man, I wasn't ready. How am I gonna respond? How am I going to respond? My emotion, I was like, oh, man. I mean, there's been times where things hit me. It's like I got to maintain my spiritual fitness because you don't know what the enemy is going to lay ahead. You don't know what he's planning to get you out of your character so we can say, ah, you're a man of God. To ruin your testimony. Man, there's been plenty of times I was like, man, you know what? I just want to, hey, is everything okay? Yeah, I just want to go. I just want to go pray for a while. I talked to this one pastor over there at my job, and I was like, hey, is everything cool? I go, yeah, I just, I just feel like I need to go home and pray right now. You know what I mean? And I was cool. I was holding myself together, but I was just like, so we went and he goes, hey, come on, let's go talk, because he's a therapist too, and so he's a good friend of mine. So we got to talk, and I just got to share with him some things, and I felt better. I was like, Phew. I didn't have to go home and pray after all, but sometimes things can cripple us. I was like, I wanted to go home and pray. Why? Because I wanted to draw some strength from God. Because I didn't want to respond the wrong way. When before I go to work, I'm like praying, God, help me to say something that will benefit others' lives. Help me to say something that will be an encouragement to these men. Help me to say something that will be an encouragement. Help me to be a light. Help me to be a beacon. I don't want to be a wet blanket. So don't let life catch you off guard. Maintain that spiritual, uh, that, that spiritual fervency that, you know, continue to be like Christ. Because there's going to, things come, it's going to get you out of your character. Things going to happen, get you out of your character. You might be told something, it might get you out of your character. They might rearrange things in the church, and it might get you out of your character. Right? You might not agree with everything that God is doing. Even God wants to do this, man, God's doing that, God's using them as like, don't get out of your character. It's like, man, you know what? Humble yourself. You know, submit to God. I always tell myself, God, you arrange the body parts so you see fit. That's all I can. God, whatever you want to do, you're going to do. Lord, I'm just a servant. And, I, and God always brings me back to that. Always brings me back to that. I got to be a servant to the Lord first before anything else. So in Exodus 2, I'm going to speed, try to speed up here. Exodus 2, 11, it came to pass in those days when, when Moses was grown, he went out and his brethren and looked look, and. And he says he looked on the burners and he spied an Egyptian, spied an uh, Hebrew. So he's older. He's walking. He's walking over there, checking things out. And he sees a, another an Egyptian, you know, beating down on the Hebrew, on the Hebrew brethren. So he says he looked this way. He looked that way. In verse two twelve, and he saw that there was no man. And so it says he slew the Egyptian, and hid him in the sand. So he saw something that wasn't right. And see, God instilled that in him. God says, man, God instilled him. A burden for his people. God put it, but the way he responded was wrong. Have we ever responded in the wrong way? Man, I've seen things happen. And I remember one time jumping off my truck. I seen a guy shaking this lady's head, and I just put it in part and jumped off and said, What are you doing? And he stopped. He goes, Ah. He started talking in Spanish. I said, You don't do that. And I was like, Man, you know, did I do that right? And I was like, Man, I don't know. You know, I you know I didn't come out swinging or nothing, but then and then uh, another time I had to do so. I said, "Man, got me a burden." I said, "Another people they're like they they were gonna kidnap. It looked like they were gonna kidnap this girl in front of the church. It was late at night. We, our church used to be between a bar and a liquor store. It was some big dudes like this, like three shacks out there with this little guy. And there was like three shacks, and I, and I go, "Oh man, I picked up my brother was cleaning there late at night. I go, hey, we, they're out there, man. We we can't just leave." I said, so I'm looking, at, hey, uh, hey, guys, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm looking up. I'm like, this is the house of the Lord. You know, you guys, you can't be acting like that. You guys got to take it somewhere. And the guy's like, oh, dude, this is the church? I said, yeah, man, I come to church, man. And, you know, I'm talking about church. Jesus. He's like, all right, I'll check you out. I'll check. But how I responded, if I would have came out like that, man, they would they would have put me in a garbage can. I don't know. They would have did something to me. They probably would have picked me up with one hand by the head like a basketball. But these were big. And I was like, how I responded, man, it, it could have cost me my life. <laughs> I don't know. Today, I was, dri I was driving home for, er, early. It's crazy right here in Fresno. I was like, man, I didn't see that, this stuff in Madero. So I'm driving home, and there's a guy with a big stick whipping this old man right there, right there by the pod. And uh, if you know where the pod is, we know where the pod morale is. I was like, whoa, wait a minute. But I was, getting, I, was, I was like, what's going on? So I had to drive around, and I stopped. I go, man, I might have, I see if I have to get out. But I didn't have to get down because that old man was getting busy. He had his walker. He had his walker up, and he's swinging his walker. And they're battling it out. 
And I was like, man, I'm like, Lord, if you want me to get down, get out, park, park. And then they separated. Went. <laughs> but that guy was down for his. He was, he was a plane out there. It's tough out there. That old man was tougher than me. He might have hit me if I would have tried to help him. I'm just trying to help you. So I was like, Lord, I get off or not. But it's crazy right there. But how we respond, it's going to make a difference, right? You know, when our wife tells us the truth, I learned that how I respond makes a difference, whether I get dinner or not. How I respond makes a difference, you know, and so I have to analyze it, you know, what, you, you know, if my wife tells me something, 99% of the time, it's, it's probably, she's probably right on. The other times I'll talk her out of it, you know, I think the devil's lying, no. No, but usually, you know, she's pretty good. She knows me well, and she knows God. So our response makes a difference. So we're going we're gonna to move it forward right here. So Moses it says that he fled. They saw him. They go, man, you know, they saw him, and he fled because of that. So it kind of threw him off track. But you know what? Even though it threw him off track and he had to leave, you know what? It led him to God. And let him to God because that's when he really got to know God. And maybe we responded to things in life the wrong way. Maybe we ended up in prison. Maybe we ended up in jail. Maybe we ended up divorced. Whatever the situation, how we ended, maybe we ended up losing a job. But you know what? It, Moses found God. You got to let that thing lead you to God. You know, maybe I didn't respond well, but let it draw you to God. And he was what he he draws so close to God. Spoke with God face to face. Face to face. But even, even Moses uh, made that mistake of taking things into his own hands. Literally, he did. He took that guy in his own hands. But it's a process. But God was always working with Moses. It wasn't over. It wasn't over. So Moses spent time. We know he met the Lord in the burning bush. He spent time with God. He's interceding for God's people. And God says, man, you need to go off this mountain because the people are getting crazy. God's like, and it says that the Lord's anger was waxed. And in verse uh, Exodus 32:10, now therefore let me alone that my wrath may wax hot against them, that I may that I may consume them, and I will make thee a great nation. He tells Moses. So God, and then Moses begins to plead with God. God, please don't destroy these people. And they're gonna say, man, you brought them out here and killed them. And uh, he begins to plead for the people. And God says, and God repented of. He says, you know what? I'm not gonna do that after all, man. You know, he, Moses interceded. But then what happens to Moses? Then when Moses starts coming down, and so verse 14 says, Then the Lord repented of the evil that he thought to do unto his people. Then in verse 19, And it came to pass, as soon as it came nigh unto the camp, that he saw the calf and the dancing. And Moses' anger waxed taut, and he cast the tablets out of his hands and break them beneath the mountain. He broke the Ten Commandments. He took, he took the calf, which they had made, burnt it in fire, ground it up to powder, uh, it says, strotted upon the water and made the children of, the, of Israel drink of it. So, man, he, Moses was ruthless. Man, that's some harsh stuff. Oh, you want to you smoke a cigarette? Come here, you're going to eat the whole pack. Right? Oh, you want to do dope here? You're going you're gonna to eat it all till you get sick. Uh, you know, it's like when your dog, he was mad. You know, he just sitting there God, oh, please don't. And then he goes down, the way he sees him, he begins to take it personal. So he begins to take it into his own hands. In his own head, it's like when your dog goes to the bathroom and you get their nose and you put their nose in the bathroom so they won't do it. And both of this was being, I remember one time I told my, my kids, clean your room. And I don't know how many times I had to tell them, clean your room. And I was tired of seeing it. I would go, clean your room. And then and uh, they didn't clean the room. I go, you need to vacuum your room. So they didn't vacuum. So I go in there, you know what, you guys are going to vacuum. I'm going to vacuum. So I responded wrong. I got the vacuum. <laughs> Vacuuming the kids' room, and I see my daughter's uh, cell phone cord. And I said, <laughs> vacuumed it up. <laughs> and she goes, my cord. I said, you shouldn't have left it on the ground. And I grabbed it and I ripped it out the, the uh, vacuum. And I, and, I, and I was like, man. And I go, clean your room. And I walk away. And the Lord convicted me. I was like, man. So I went out and I bought her. I apologized. I bought her a new cord. But my response was wrong. Did it, did it help her be a better, uh, no, it didn't because her room is probably still dirty today. So it didn't bring forth nothing. All, all, it, it did, all it did was cost me money and she got a new cord. But I didn't respond. But see, we can take things in our own hands and take things personal. How we respond makes a difference. It makes a difference in people's lives. Moses says, man, you want to do that, man? Now you're going to eat it. I'm going to make you pay for it. But the Bible says, the word of God says that vengeance is mine, says the Lord. 
You know, if, you know, if God wasn't going to punish him, if God changed his mind, who are we to go? And if God forgave him, who are we to go and put some extra punishment, extra discipline, extra shame on people? If God already forgave him, God already said, man, you know, I repent of this. I'm not going to do nothing after all. But then here he comes and he takes it personal. This is what I'm talking about. We can respond. We can take things personal. They didn't do it to you. They did it to God. We could take things personal. I remember even just doing worship team, and people don't know. And sometimes, you know, doing worship, and sometimes they change the song. I go, they change the song, and I'm like, oh, and they're singing a different song. And inside, I'm furious. And I'm like, Little Pat, don't say anything. Just praise the Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord, you know, for another day. And I have to just say, you know what, I'm not going to respond to that. The flesh is here, but I'm not going to respond to that. And there's times I've shared things with people that go, I couldn't even know you were mad because you know why? And, you know, sometimes you will. And I was like, oh, man. But a lot of times you won't because you know what? I'm not going to respond to that. Yes, I'm upset. Yes, I didn't like it. But you know what? I'm not going to respond to that. I'm not going to let it pull me out of my character because that's what Satan would love. He would love for her to see someone get frustrated and the brother to say, you know what? And, you know, I'll throw the mic down, just walk off. You finish the song. That'd be crazy if something like that happened. He would never do that. I would never do that. But, but. You know, sometimes the flesh, you know, someone can hit a wrong chord and you can be mad. Like, how could you hit that wrong chord? You know, and it happened. And 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 um, I can't let it get at my character. I go, man, you know what? I need the character of God. I got, we got to maintain that spiritual discipline. Because sometimes it could be just the smallest things and it gets you out of character. It's the smallest thing. Somebody says, oh, you got new shoes. And you get mad. You think they're making fun of your shoes. And I was sharing that like... Uh, Man, I used to get made fun of a lot. So if someone says, hey, you look good today. I'd be like, man, why are you making fun of me for? Really? So if someone says, hey, nice shoes, I'd say, why are you making fun of my shoes? That's how I feel inside. But, you know, I have to learn. i say, man, I'm not going to respond to that. I'm not going to respond to that. You know, I'm just going to, you know, you know, I had to learn to receive praise from people sometimes. And it was hard for me because I always felt like, you know, because it was a defect of character for the way I was raised. And it was affecting the way I respond to people, even people with good intentions. Even when people were being good to me, I was like, man, they must want something from me. Why are they being all nice all of a sudden? They must want something. That's suspicious. One time, uh, even Pastor Danny took me to lunch. Hey, I want to take you to lunch one time. So I okay, I can't wait to lunch. I was like, man, what is he going to tell me? He didn't say nothing. He just took me to lunch. I was like, oh. I'm, but you see how the mind plays? I said, man, I'm not going to play into that. Because if I did, oh, I can't make it, Pastor Danny. Oh, whatever. I could have said all this, but it would have kept me from the blessing. It would have kept me from the blessing. You see, I would say, if God has something, a place for us to go. And sometimes we could just let, you know, uh, you know, these defects of character, these things that spring up in our lives, you know, through situations or people, and it could rob us, detour us from our future. So Moses didn't handle everything right. And we, we could be honest, we don't handle everything. I didn't handle that vacuum cleaner right. And we could do that. We could do that. Even being men of God and women of God. James 1.19 says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. And I'm like, oh, wow. The wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. When I get mad and I want to rearrange things, it does not work the righteousness of God. God is not glorified when we get angry. When we make the choice, then I'm angry. So it's like, if I don't feel like I have a clear mind, I'm not going to make a choice at all. And sometimes it's a hard thing. And my, our mama's told us right. If you can't say nothing right, don't say nothing at all. Just let it sit. Let it sit if you got to. So we want to be led by the spirit, not driven by the flesh. Because the flesh, things will not go your way. You will encounter things that you disagree they, they don't even have to be bad or simple, but just that disagreement, you know, it's incongruent inside. It's just like, I don't, I don't agree with this. You know, it's, it's conflicting with my spirit. But you know what? We got to learn just to submit to the authorities that God puts in place. And I had to learn to do that myself many times. Many times my pastor would come and tell me things. And I'd be like, oh, okay. And I'd be like, well, how can we not tell you them? But like, don't worry about them. Worry about yourself. Don't worry about them. You know, yeah. So we'll just. But I'm still here. I'm still obedient. But you know what? I'm able because I was able to submit to that man. I could, I could, I could sit, submit to him. I could share with him just about anything. I don't care how I feel, how hu, hu, how hum, humble of myself. Something. I mean, to the to the core. If I have to, I'll be like, man, I just want to share this with you, Pastor Tim, because I just need to. 
You know, I need, if I can't talk to him, who can I talk to? So I have to humble myself. I had to learn to trust him and learn to, you know, and I learned to also learn to accept correction. There's things I want to do, but the Lord directs my steps. I told him, man, I want to do this and that. So he's like, okay, we're going to do it, but we're going to do it like this. And he started, I'm like, oh, okay, you know, but that's the Lord directing my steps. You want to do that? Okay, but you're going to do it this way. The Lord, let the Lord direct your steps. You don't have to agree with it, but you have to be obedient to it. We, you know, and we have to be obedient to what God wants to do and what God doesn't want to do. And we have to be, learn to be obedient to that, even if we don't agree with it. So when Moses changed his mind, but God didn't change his mind, but Moses changed his mind, God spurred his people. He goes down and then he wants to spank everybody. Well, God already forgave him. God already forgave him. You got to remember that. So uh, they, they didn't just happen. So Moses was getting better. So he went from killing a man to just making them eat it. You're going to eat this. You know, instead of smashing it on their heads, he smashed it on the ground. Back then with that, who knows, it, is, it just says he slew the man. I don't know how he slew that man. But, you know what I mean, but people, people got hurt. You know, people got hurt during that. Uh, I was looking up today, uh, and I think, and I was like, "What happened to her?" Because there was Aaron and her holding Moses' arm. What happened to him? And and and, it's, and I, was, I was trying to find out. They said a lot. They they think that he got killed during this time, because he stood up against the calf. That's a, that's what I was looking at some Jewish history, but I didn't look into that. So if you could find out for me, let me know. I want to know how he died too. But. If you look at it, there was men still support. They they seen Moses' flaws. They didn't agree with everything Moses did, but they still supported him. That's why when his arms were getting heavy, they went and put a rock under him. They still supported him. They still supported him, uh, no matter what, because they knew their place and they knew. And you know what? And God, God moved the people forward, but not all of them. But not all of them. So it cost Moses. Amen. His destiny. So authority is given by God, but we can all misuse our authority. And that's why I share about, if that's God, how come this? How come they're like that? You know what I mean? I don't believe, no, but God does give people authority. But sometimes even us, we can misuse our authority. We can misuse our authority on how we treat people. And even my old job, I remember having to boss people around. And I didn't like doing that. They used to make me, hey, we need you to, you can't be friends with these guys. You need to be like this. You need to be like that. You need to eat lunch by yourself. I was like, whoa, they had all these restrictions at my old job on me. I was like, man, I can't. I had to go against the nature of God that God was trying to instill inside of me. And I'm glad I don't work there anymore. But I was trying to be obedient to it. But, you know, just because they misuse their authority doesn't mean that it was for God. I said, look, I remember my boss told me one time, Pat, do it this way. And I go, I thought I had a better way. And it didn't get done. He goes, Pat, he goes, you know what, it's all, it didn't get done, but you should have did it the way I said. If you, I told you to do it this way. If it doesn't work out, it's on me. That's what he told me. So I said, you know what? I got. I should just follow the instructions. I wouldn't have been in trouble. Hey, I did what you said. It didn't work out. He'd be like, okay, next time let's do it this way. But because I wanted to do it my own way, I got heat on me. That could be part of the reason why they don't like me over there. But Moses, uh, so if we look at, let's look at this. Let's keep it rolling here. Number 20, 20 verse 8. Take the rod you get, and gather the assembly together. Thou and, and Aaron thy brother, and speak unto the rock before their eyes, and it shall give forth this water, and it shall bring forth to them water out of the rock, and thou shalt give the congregation and their beasts drink. And Moses took the rod from the Lord as he commanded him. And in verse 10, and Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation before the rock, and he, and he said to them, Hear now, you rebels, we fetch you out, water out of this rock. So he's like, so if you look at his attitude, he was obedient to God. But he says, come here, you stinking rebels, you sinners. Look at his attitude. And look at his attitude there. And Moses lifted up his hand, and with, it, with his rod, he, he smote the rock twice, and water came out abundantly, and the congregation drank, and their beasts also. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, because you believe me not, to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel. Therefore, you shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given them. So God held Moses accountable. Man, Moses was, he was a tough pastor. We think our pastor, Moses was tough. He made him eat stuff. He, man, he went, man, man he, was, he was ruthless, you could think. He was a good guy, though. He was a good guy. He loved God. But it was a process. Look where he went from murdering a man to smashing tablets, busting up the calf and making him eat that thing. To so like, man, you want some rock? Here's some rock, you crazy rebels. You know, he, you know, maybe they were crazy rebels. But God didn't tell him to say that. 
And he says, man, because you didn't, you didn't sanctify me in front of the people. You, you, know, you didn't rep, miss, you're not going to take him into the, but, but, but Moses learned, I think that was where he learned. And he probably said, man, you know what? You know, that's probably when he finally got it. Because we know that he made it. We know that he made it. But it's a process. And in your life, it's a process. But you can see, man, Moses wasn't perfect. None of the men of God were perfect in there. But you know what? You see that God never left them nor forsake them. God was always with Moses. God was always working with Moses. God never left them. No matter how hard he was, God never left. God was always refining them and refining them and refining them. You see, man, all he, you know, he was a hard preacher. He was like 1980 New Harvest. I wasn't here. To, I came right after that. I got the end. But you know what? It changed my. I needed that though. I needed that. I don't. I don't. You know what I mean, I remember when I came. You know, I first got saved. I needed that. I needed that. I needed that. I don't know if everybody needed that, but I needed that. So I thank God for that. He knew what he was doing at the time. Philippians one six. Being confident is very thing that which he has begun a good work in you will will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. So it's a process. And you might not be killing people or be going to prison, being on the run. But you know what? But you're better than you were last week. You might not be arguing with your spouse every week, but you might get into a little here and there. But you know what I learned to do? I learned to pray together. I, you know, I said, man, you know what? You know, if I feel, I said, you know what, let's pray about it. I was like, you know what? It works wonders. And some, some things just get left in God's hands. You know, she, don't, she wants to do this. I want to do that. Well, let's just pray about it. We don't agree about this. Well, let's pray about it. She wants to do this, and I want to do that. Two different directions. I said, let's pray about it. And you know what? And it saves us a lot of heartache, a lot of frustration. And we learn to come together, and it brings us back together. And I get my dinner every night. But what I want to say is don't resist the process. Whatever God tells us to do, remember, all authority comes from God. You know, God, we have to worry about our part of being obedient. Our part of being obedient. You know, God held Moses accountable, so you don't have to worry. We don't have to worry about our pastors. Let's pray for our pastors. Let's pray for our leaders. Uh, let's focus on our part and being obedient. Focus on, because we know that, 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 that God had Moses. God never left Moses. God hasn't left your pastor. You might think, I think God left my pastor. God has. He never left your pastor. He never left Moses. He never left David. He, even, he didn't even leave Samson. Samson might have thought his power left Samson. But he said, remember me. And man, and God remembered him. God had his eye on Samson the whole time. He's just waiting for him to call out. God never leaves us nor forsakes us. So it's a process. So Jeremiah 6, 27 through 29, this is a, I think this is a very good scripture. So it says, I have set thee as a tower, for a tower, a fortress among my people, that thou mayest know and try their way. It says, they are all grievous revolters, walking with slanders. They are brass and iron. They are all corruptors. It says, the bowels have burned, the lead is consumed by the fire, the founder melted in vain, for the wicked are not plucked away. And it's talking about his people. It's like, man, they went through the fire. The bowels, I think those are those things that blow the fire, are they? If I'm wrong. You can, I hope I'm right. On, but, yeah, but he's talking about the fire because these people went through the fire. All the lead was melted away, All, whatever they call it, the dross or the lead, different versions. Of the so they went through the fire, and when they came out, It says, and the, and the founder, the founder mounted the vein for the wicked were not plucked away. So they went to the fire and they didn't change. He goes, man, and the Lord calls them rejected silver. Look it up. Look it up. The Lord called me because they went to the, I don't want to go to the fire for no reason and come out the same. Man, I don't like going to trial. I don't want to go to the wilderness and they have to go to the wilderness and they have to go to the wilderness. I said, man, I want to respond well in situations. I, you know, I, I don't want to have to be, be, I don't want to go to the fire and fail and just go to the fire again. And it says, man, they went through the fire, and you know what? And it, it, nothing's changed. Man, they turned up the heat, they put them to the fire, they went to the trial, and nothing changed. Nothing's changed. But we know that Moses did change, and maybe it was that last little discipline that made him because we know he was there. Because he's with Jesus in Matthew 17, 1 says, and this is the Mount of trans Transfiguration. And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth him unto the high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them. His face did shine as the sun, and his raiment as white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elijah talking with them. So Moses made it. 
God never left him. You know, he didn't, he didn't get to fulfill everything that God did, but you know what? He made it. God never left him. And you know what? God will never leave, leave us, but you know what? I don't want to miss the opportunity that God has. I don't know how many more years I have left. I don't know how many more times I have to get these things right in my life, whatever those things are. I don't know how much time uh, God is going to get, how much grace he's going to have for me to say, you know what? We're going to have to find somebody else because you're just, you're wasting you know, the kingdom of God must be built. It must go on. And so I want to learn to respond right in the situations. Because I want to get to that promise. That I want to see my kids get married. Except for my, well, maybe my son, not my daughters. I want to see my kids get married. Though I was thinking like, man, I want to see my grandkids. I was like, man, I want to be there. And um, I want to see that. So, but how I respond to situations is going to make a difference whether I enter in and how Moses responded. And, man, it kept him out. You know, but God never left him. And you see the process in his life. He went to, from a rough man and he was a humble man. But he went through things. And if he went through things, you and I are going to go through some things. And they might just set you off. They might just set you off. But how we respond is what's going to make a difference. How we respond or we don't respond is going to make all the difference. So we want to maintain that spiritual fitness. Why? Because you don't know what's going to happen tonight when you get home. So don't go break into your car out there. Not here because the ushers are good. But you never know. You never know. So we're going to pray tonight as the band comes up. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, I just pray that you help.